All right. Hey everyone. So I just made, or I'm making a video um, right now to cover some of, some of the techniques that I explained on Monday. I was reviewing the Zoom recording and when I switched over to use my phone as the main source for the demonstration and actually wasn't captured. Um, so I'm going to look into that a little bit between now and the next time we meet. And in the meantime, I'm going to talk through uh, some of the things we discussed on Monday, add a few more things, and then I'll post this video probably to the YouTube playlist. Um, all right, so anyway, so heat setting of synthetic uh, fibers or synthetic fabrics. So we have our polyester organza. It's a really, really lightweight, plain weave fabric. It has great heat setting potential. So the fabrics that I have here are, were all created using a stitching of the polyester fabric with vanishing thread and shrink wrap. So that's something that we're actually gonna be covering next week, so next Wednesday. Um, so I'm going to get back to these at that time. The techniques that I want to review and cover today are going to be these techniques where you're able to either incorporate a material, a small object into the fabric, tie it off and heat set it, um, or perhaps even just use the fabric itself. So being able to just tie off little pieces of fabric. Both of these would be called shibori. So as I mentioned, if you research the technique of shibori, you can get a lot of different ideas of how to create interesting resists. So I have these two examples. And in order to create these examples, like we said, I have something that I prepped here. I was able to just cut a piece of my organza, and then I have these medium-sized buttons that I tied off into the organza. So here I just have, I'm using just a piece of um, linen string, and you can use if you go, I guess, even to the grocery store, you can, you're can you able to get even just some cotton, some really fine cotton rope. So really anywhere in here, you just wanna place your object. Um, I like to maybe twist it around a couple times just to kind of secure my area. And then we want to just secure it with our linen yarn. So I'm actually just gonna wrap that around and then tie it off. There's really no wrong way to do this, to tie things off. You just want to make sure that it's secure and you're not going to have it come out while you are steaming. So there we go. So that's one. All right, so we'll just add that. I already prepared some other tie-offs with this particular fabric. Um, and so also just to kind of like consolidate space, because I really like the way that this has the small gathering, and then we have a lot of extra fabric here. Once I put it in the colander, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and gather um, these other areas on top and just pin it together. You could also use, like if you have a binder clip, you could go ahead and use that. Um, if you have like a paper clip, you could just go ahead and paper clip it. Um, or if you have some pins, they will start to rust like over time. You can use these um, a few times before they have to be discarded, even if they're stainless steel. All right, so I have that sample finished. I'm going to bring it over here. Let's see. So that would be a tie off. Um, oh, another one that I thought was fun was this. So I actually just found 
I'm not sure if this is gonna melt with the steam, so I'm actually gonna make sure I watch it. This was wrapped around a wine bottle that I purchased recently. So I just took like a section of it I have some organza here and I was just kind of pulling it through to perhaps consider, um, you know, what this might look like. So I just pulled that through like that. So what I think I'm actually gonna do with this particular one though, you can see I pulled it through um, five different slots. I'm actually then going to take some foil And I'm, I'm going to push it down. I'm going to try to flatten it. So let's see. I'm going to do that. And I'm going to take, just to secure it, some of my paper clips. Again, you could use binder clips. You could, uh, you could use pins actually if you needed to, if you don't have any of these other things. Um, and then maybe I'm just going to kind of gather it up in a cylinder just like that, see what happens. There we go. So we have this. Another sample that I brought from past work was this spiral. So a student actually just wrapped the organza in a spiral fashion um, using foil. And then I believe I actually put this in the oven, but um, for today, I'm gonna use the steamer for 30 minutes for each of these samples. Um, and so I actually already did prep one here, but if you want it to do something like that, you could say, let's say we have this and piece I'm using is a bit smaller than what said what we used to create this, um, but just for demonstration, we just mock it up. And I could take that and then I can start to actually swirl. The fabric. I don't know the exact technique that was used. So I would do like a handful of trials to get our best results. So I actually have two of these now. So let's do both of those. Something else you can do is just like a straight up pleating with the foil or creating some type of resist. My foil is getting a little low. could, let's 
take a piece of organza. I would want the organza to be either the same size or a little smaller than my foil. Um, and then I could research different um, pleating patterns. I could, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and mark, let's say one inch increments within my pleating. So any type of like resist or pleating technique or a fact that you're trying to go for, there's so many resources um, available online that are gonna show you how to prep for this. So I'm just doing like a, a basic accordion pleat. This fabric is pretty small, probably about like an inch and a half. Um, if you're working, you know, patiently and slowly, you'll be able to get some really nice tight pleats. So I have that here. And again, I could maybe then pleat it the other way, or I'm just gonna kind of soften this and just get a little bit, maybe a curl. So I have that. Um, you can also do, it's something called Arashi. I can only find these pop, some popsicle sticks, um, but you could use, like if you have a straw or like a bamboo straw, one of those disposable straws, um, you can certainly use that as a center point or a core with which to wrap your fabric. So in this case, with this one, let's see, what did I do? I actually want it to see what would happen if I folded it here on the bias and then I was taking this This is the first time I've done a Rashi before, but not this little like popsicle stick mock-up. Okay, so I wanna secure this end before I move on. And now I'm going to just push it all down. Um, and I could, let's do this. We'll do that. Then I'm gonna cut some string and I'm actually gonna just wrap that entire core. You could even use, like I have um, basting thread, which is wax, so it might leave a slight residue. It's really, really strong. Um, this is a 40 tex basting thread. But so here, I'm just gonna take some of this. in the screen and let's actually just well, let's tie it off I'm just gonna throw that binder clip right back on there. Just to secure it, I can remove this one. So there we go. So we have this, our Rashi. And then the last one that I'm gonna do, which is brand new and optional, depending on if you have a printer, me or if you are able to 
like get to a FedEx. I actually would recommend that these are you that you either can uh, if you have like an iPad, you could trace this off. Um, but if you are going to print these out, I forgot to mention printing with a laser printer instead of an inkjet will prevent the ink from bleeding um, onto your fabric. So even if you print this out, you could then go ahead and just trace this off with pencil. I'm going to show you how to fold that in a minute. Um, and we're able to get these initial like herringbone origami tessellations. This is a pretty large scale to demonstrate the technique. Um, and I already did prep one here and I'll come back to that in just a minute. All right, so, and the playlist that I have for materials, I posted this uh, tessellations video, I think on Monday. Um, there is a video demonstration of this, but they use just a plain white paper and um, kind of mark out, uh, I believe it's one inch across and they do an accordion pleat, you do an accordion pleat, an accordion pleat, you pull it out, and then the dotted lines are gonna be your valleys, and the solid lines are going to be your peaks. So we're basically going to be working towards getting this paper to look like this paper. So you can see those dotted lines are the peaks, and the solid lines are the valleys, okay? So, in order to do that, I'm going to start by, like I said, doing an accordion pleat straight across the page. If the view of the page was in portrait. Hmm, my cutting board just came up. Okay, so we have one. This one I like to even just like go ahead and fold it like this. Right, so at least I have my crease and then I can start to work it the other way. This just takes time uh, and a little bit of patience. I don't have a lot of patience. So this was kind of a fun, this is every year a fun technique for me to, to demo because it forces me to have patience. The better and more crisp your creases, the more successful your um, resulting heat set fabric will be. All right. Okay, so that's the first setup. I have my accordion. Now I work diagonally. So I'm gonna pleat, and you do an accordion pleat this way. So I'm going to fold right here, and then right here. Right? and like that okay so I'm gonna give that you can like run your ruler over it okay so now you want to open it up. And this is the part that I think is, requires the most patience. So basically now I, I at least have a set crease established 
whether it's on a dotted or on a solid here. So I want to then work my way up the page and I want to fold every dotted line in um, or away from me and every solid line towards me. So I like to just literally start here and just move up. So I'm just folding that. Okay. So like that one right there. And this is just, you know, the first time you do it, it might look like your dog uh, chewed the paper. And then you just, that was a practice one. And then you start with a clean piece and you do it again. So I have the base completed. So now I'm going to work up to my second level. Good, so I'm like mm, a little over 50% there. That is gonna be a valley. This is a peak. So you can see we're getting there. So now I just have to work out these. I need to pop these three up here. And that one down and we should be good to go. Good, good, good. I think there's, there actually is supposed to be. That's supposed to be dotted. So you can see, once you get to that final stage, you really want to spend some time making sure that this is nice and crisp because that's going to better help these, it's going to better help the fabric fit in and it's going to better help 
the pieces of paper um, work together. So now I'm just gonna take my paper. You wanna cut the piece of organza basically the size of a piece of paper an eight by 10. Mine's a little longer um, on the edges or on, on lengthwise, cause I actually want it, I kind of want a little bit of non-pleated volume on either end, just cause I'm curious to see what that's gonna look like. So then go like that. And you're just gonna keep on working at it. Push it down and together. Um, and it just takes practice. You can also, like if you decide to push forward with this technique, you can start to create these sketched out tessellations on oak tag or like bristol board. All right, so now you want this to be really secure. Something you could do is like put an iron cloth over it or a press cloth and like press it down to get it into that um, nice flattened shape before you steam set it. So when we're at school, we actually have a heat press um, where we're able to take these very flat techniques or sorry very flat manipulations and then we have like a heated press on the top and bottom and we just fold it down um, but we can you know we can do our best to mimic that um, by just be being very tight and secure like this And then for this one, I am going to go ahead and wrap this in some foil. Uh, this should be interesting. You definitely don't wanna put this in the oven because of the paper. Um, so this would either be steamed or heat set. And I'm really not sure how successful this will be. I have not done this particular uh, paper technique in the steamer. All right, so now I'm going to just move the camera over to my um, steam pot that I have on the stove. I'll show you putting everything in. I'm gonna steam it for 30 minutes, let everything cool down, and then we'll look at them. Oh, and I have one last thing over here that I'm looking at. Um, this was, this is an example of, this is actually a neck piece, like a cowl, um, that is using a long strip of this heat set polyester organza that's then been um, stitched together with these really nice enclosed seams. I'll put that up on my dress form sometime next week. All right, so here we are. So I have all of my samples here ready to go. Um, actually, for these two, I forgot, I wanna just put them, I'm just gonna kind of protect them in a little piece of foil like that. You'll see me put it in. I'm actually holding the camera in my hand right now. So uh, this is my pot. I do, I did preheat the water. I just turned it on again, but you can see, I just have a little bit of water in the bottom, probably an inch and a half, not taller than these legs. And I'm going to just go ahead and throw everything in. Let's see how that goes. And I'm actually gonna throw those other two, I'll throw these in in just a second when I turn off the camera, but imagine they're in there. And then I'm gonna turn this on. And you know what, there's like quite a few things in here. So, what time is it? 
I'm gonna steam maybe for like 40 minutes. Okay. <laughs> 